Hi folks, this is the last part of lesson four and we're going to sketch this graph here and we're going to see that this function is going to be much easier to sketch than the previous one. Okay, number four sort of had everything thrown at you. This one we're going to see is going to be significantly easier. Okay, so step one is always the same. We're going to factor to see if there's any simplification uh, that uh, happens. And even if there isn't, factoring will be helpful in determining the other characteristics of the function. Okay, so numerator, pretty easy. Just a trinomial here. So this is going to be x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay, and here denominator, just a difference of squared. So x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, and we see that there's no simplification, so no holes to worry about. So we can go ahead and now analyze uh, this factored form of the function. Okay, so let's start with the domain. So what are the x values for which this function is defined? Well, everything except where the denominator is equal to zero. So here it's gonna be x in R such that, and the two values that we exclude from the domain are positive and negative one. So x can't be equal to positive or negative one. Okay, so this is what we're working with. So next we go to the x-intercepts. So again, x-intercepts, we just look at where the numerator is equal to zero and we see the numerator is equal to zero at three and at negative two. So negative two and three. Next we'll look for our vertical asymptotes. <clears throat> That's where the denominator is gonna be equal to zero. So we have two vertical asymptotes. We have the line x equals negative one and the line x equals one. All right, let's find the y-intercept to see if it's helpful, you know, and again, usually use the y-intercept if it's a nice number, uh, something that's within the reason for our, uh, uh, our graph. So let's see what we have. And I'm gonna remind you here that these two uh, expressions are equivalent. And I think it's easier to find the y-intercept from the first version than the second version where I have to do a little bit of work. Because here, when I put an f at zero, well, Oops, sorry about that. All these terms are just equal to zero. I'm just left with negative six over negative one. So that's just equal to six. Okay, so there's our y-intercept. Now let's find our end behavior. And this is gonna be significantly easier to what we had before because we have uh, a quadratic over a quadratic. So same degree in numerator and denominator. So all I have to do is look at the leading coefficients of numerator and denominator. And again, notice how I'm working with the unsimplified version of the, poly, of the rational function. So that's just one over one. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals one. Okay, and to help us put everything together, we're gonna determine the sign of the function. Now you might be wondering why I always put f at x here is because I want to show that what I'm determining in terms of signs are the signs of the y values. Plus when we expand our analysis of these functions in calculus, we're going to see that, well, we're going to be doing some things like this, but with uh, things other than just the function itself. Okay, so some stuff to come. So we're gonna indicate on our number line all the possible places where the function can change sign. And of course, that's at all the x-intercepts and the uh, vertical asymptotes. So let's go in order. So the smallest one is negative two. Okay, then negative one, <coughs> then one and three. Okay, so still quite a few, uh, um, quite a few uh, intervals to check. So remember, we just have to check one value in each interval because it can never change sign within the interval. So here I'll pick negative three, here I'll pick negative 1.5, here I'll pick zero, here I'll pick two, and here I'll pick four. So let's take negative three and stick it into my equation here. Notice how I use the factored form because it's very easy to determine the sign. So if I put in negative three, negative three minus three, negative, then negative three plus two, also negative. So negative times negative, positive. Okay, let's look at the denominator. Again, this is gonna be negative when I put negative three, also negative, negative times negative, positive. So the end result, positive over positive, is gonna give me an interval with positive y values. Let's stick, stick in negative 1.5. This is gonna be negative. Oh, but that's gonna be positive. Negative times positive, negative. Let's look at the denominator. This will be negative still, and negative, negative times negative, positive. So the end result will be a negative over positive, 
negative. Okay. I actually don't need to check zero because we already did that. We checked F at zero and we saw that it was six, so a positive number. So I don't need to check, go back to the original function. Let's put in two, negative, positive, so negative, and then positive, positive. Okay, so the end result is a negative number. And let's put in four, positive, 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 positive. All terms are positive, so those multiplications and divisions will all give me a uh, positive number. Okay, so now from here, <clears throat> we go to sketching the graph. So again, we worry about the structure. So if I look at my x-axis, I'm going from negative two to three. So going up and down by one is reasonable. And here, well, I've got a horizontal asymptote at one, y equals one, and then I've got this y-intercept at six. So maybe I'll bring my x-axis <clears throat> A little further down so I can get to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, had my y intercept been 36, I wouldn't have bothered necessarily trying to get it on the graph. Okay. Not as important as all the other aspects that we're looking at. Okay. I'm going to put this right down the middle since I have to go almost the same distance in either direction. So y and x. And here, one, two. One, two. Okay, so let's put our structure, which is going to be our x-intercepts. So that's at negative two and at three. Okay, let's put our y-intercept. So one, two, three, four, five, six up here. And let's put our vertical asymptotes. So at x equals negative one and x equals positive one. Okay. So last thing we have is our end behavior. So our horizontal asymptote at y equals one, but keep in mind that this only comes to comes into play when I'm trying to show my end behavior. Okay. It can do anything we like around there in the middle of the function. It's only for the end behavior. Okay. So now that we've got our, all our structure in there, let's start analyzing this graph. So to the left of negative two, it has to be positive, but we know that it's going to be following the horizontal asymptote. And then to the right of negative two, it's got to be negative. So for this vertical asymptote, it's going to have to go down to negative infinity. Okay. <clears throat> Can't go to positive infinity because we know the numbers in this interval have to be negative. Okay. So let's try to draw that here. So normally I'd start in pencil. But let's see if I can do something that's pretty good. Okay, so down to negative infinity here, and then it's going to approach the horizontal asymptote. So let's take a look at the next interval, <coughs> which is between negative one and one, and we see that the function is always positive. So that means for both of these vertical asymptotes, on the right side of the of this one here, it has to go to positive infinity, and to the left side of this one here, it has to also go to positive infinity. Since the function is always positive in this interval, there's no way it can ever cross the x-axis. So I can draw, there we go, and there we go. All right, so let's look between one and three. The function's negative, so it's gonna have to go down and then to the right side, it's positive. It's going to have to go to the positive side, but it's going to follow the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to have something like this on the right side of this graph. Okay. And we see that this was much simpler than the previous example. We didn't have to worry about as much factoring. We didn't have to worry about a whole Okay, and we didn't have to worry about determining an oblique asymptote using a division. Okay, but we did follow the same procedures. Factor, see if there's any simplification, determine the domain, x-intercept, vertical asymptote, y-intercept, end behavior, use our number line to determine the sign of the function throughout the domain, and then from there we can put it all together to draw a graph. And if you check on Desmos, you should see something that looks relatively similar. Okay, and that's it for this lesson here.